Hey everyone. Really quickly today, I've got an idea that I want to explore with all of you. Um, I feel like after six weeks of talking at you about principles for agile org transformation and just tell, 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 um, now I'm in that space where I want to explore again. Uh, and one of the things that occurred to me this week, I've been working with a team who are breaking their work down into small chunks and um, they're working with time boxed segments of work. So they are time boxing their, um, their working rhythms around a two week period. And so every two weeks they're checking in with what are we, what are we planning for the next two weeks? And then as we roll through, how well did we go in achieving what it was that we planned for? Um, what's working, what's not working? Pretty standard sort of agile stuff. Uh, and the, the intent with this team is that they're trying to drive some accountability because historically they've been in uh, more of a support function type role and things have tended to drag because there's not that urgency of a project delivery or a, um, a customer outcome or something going into market. So they've they sort of lacked that sense of urgency. And so rather than creating a false sense of urgency around their work, um, what they've decided to do is to try and time box their work rhythms and then to drive some accountability about like what are we actually getting through, keep that momentum going. Uh, and so that's that's all well and good. There's a number of reasons why teams would choose to work this way, um, not the least of which is so that if you're breaking work down into small chunks, you can remain more responsive. But the main driving force behind this team choosing to make this decision about the way that they run their work uh, is, is about driving accountability. And so I've had some really interesting conversations and it occurred to me this week that human beings on the whole are not great at working in flow-based systems. So when we're in an environment where we need to continually deliver, uh, you know, we need to get a little bit better each day. I think a lot of us are not used to being in that environment at all, certainly coming from a project background. Um, you know, a lot of my corporate history has been in, in the project and the capital work side of businesses. Um, certainly in a project sense, uh, we're not we're not sort of used to that day-to-day -day operations. And then when you get into that operational side, I see, you know, there's that malaise and that lag and that sort of lethargy and apathy that goes along with doing the same thing over and over. And that repetition can get quite sort of tiresome. Uh, you know, as, as humans, we want new and spontaneous things. We want just enough stretch and just enough new and not too much change and a little bit of familiarity. Um, and so I'm finding it really interesting to explore this dynamic. Um, within the context of this particular team around how do we build that sense of flow? So they've gone through the 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 sort of the typical thing of hey, we've got this huge backlog of work that we want to get through. So let's prioritize a bunch of things in and then at the end of the two weeks, well we didn't quite get through as much as we thought we did because there were all these other distracting factors that created noise and meant that we couldn't spend as much time and that's all totally valid. So then we carry in a bunch of work into the next two week sprint and then we probably add in a few more things so that the whole time we sort of feel like we're paying catch up a little bit. And it occurs to me as a coach, you know, watching this and having the benefit of not participating in um, and I guess the work and, and the pressures around that work as part of the organization, it's, we often are sitting coaching teams around start less, finish more. If you narrow that focus and you get clear on that focus as a team and you collaborate on a team around those outcomes, of course we're going to drive things through much quicker. And that means that you can then pull stuff in because you're getting through work as opposed to lumping all of these things on top of ourselves and then going and, and fossicking away and trying to get through it all, but always having too many things on the go and, and stretching ourselves too thin. And so, so not an uncommon dynamic, no matter what team you're working with. I think all of us have been in those places where we experience that overwhelm and too many things on the go and we actually just need to write a list or we need to just stop some stuff. So that's all pretty common. But when I zoom out and look at the, the airplane view, the, like the, the 30,000 feet view, it strikes me that we're not great at dealing with flow-based systems. So when I look at the way that work flows through an organization, if we if we come to terms with, I guess, a, one of our purposes as leaders to facilitate the flow of value through an organization, when I look at the way we go about doing that, 
when I look at the the way that we try and structure our work, the way we structure our meetings, the way that we want to get into doing things, we're often breaking down into uh, chunky pieces of delivery, and then we have a big celebration at the end when we've done it. And so this manifests as projects, as programs, as um, you know, this conversation that I'm having with a lot of organisations now around there are no more silver bullets. We need to get into this way of working where we are continually delivering value. We're continually improving. And that's a flow-based system, which is often not what we've been operating in. And, and there's the friction and the struggle that goes along with that and, and teams working through, well, how do we operate? What does it look like to, to operate in that way? And what do you mean I don't want to start all five things on my plate? If I don't start all of them, then we're not making progress on them. We're not seen to be moving forward and then I'm going to get questioned about it. If I start to push back on work, I'm scared that somebody's going to, you know, that squeaky wheel syndrome, they're going to start asking, well, why haven't you started? Because there's something inherent about the fact that we measure our progress based on what we've started, rather than necessarily focusing on what we finish. And then every now and again, we come back and we have a huge push to finish stuff. And so I was watching this, this, this sort of process happen within businesses, and it occurred to me that other flow systems in our, in our life, you know, we're not great at dealing with. Money, flow-based system, you know, that concept of money as energy and flow and that dynamic of how it moves through our lives and the fact that many people struggle with their personal finances, with you know, just managing that as a concept and, and getting the outcomes that they're looking for. Diet is another flow-based system. You know, what does it look like to have that life cycle of food through our body? Not just the initial taste on the tip of the tongue, but actually the entire process, that entire flow-based system, which is around nourishment for our body, um, and, and starting to get into that space rather than simply what's going in our mouths to start with. Um, exercise is another one. So, you know, there's a lot of those well-being components where we know we should focus on these things. And they're not the type of things that we can do once, say it's done, and move on. It's just, it's a flow-based system. It's something that we need to continually perpetuate. We need to continually evolve. We can't just do the same thing every day. If we go into the gym and lift weights in the same way every day, we'll get bored out of our brains. If we eat the same food Monday to Wednesday, it, some of us are quite functional eaters, but largely if we're eating the same thing every day because it's the optimal nutrition, it's, it's not going to do it for us, right? Like we want a little bit of that variety and we want to bring that in. And so balancing that consistency of doing what it is that's going to get the outcome that we want, eating healthy, exercising more, all of those things, and balancing a little bit of spontaneity around, well, hey, actually, maybe I'm not going to do that today. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just going to eat candy today because that's what I need. But balancing that consistency and the spontaneity in a flow-based system is not something that we're great at. And it's showing up in business as well. And so very quickly, because the cat is apparently calling, but very quickly, what I wanted to share this week was this observation that I think as human beings, we're not great at managing flow-based systems and it's showing up in our business and it's making it harder for us to step into that space of responsiveness in our organizations and developing responsive structures in our organizations. And so I guess the challenge that I'm setting this week is that I would be really curious for you to go and to look at other flow-based systems in your life. Maybe it's money, maybe it's diet, maybe it's exercise, maybe it's something else. Go and have a look at some of those other flow-based systems and see what you can practice in terms of that diligence around consistency and, and rhythm and equally balancing the spontaneity and just enough electric spark to kind of keep you interested and keep you curious and keep you moving and keep you happy in that consistency, contented in that consistency without it feeling like it's just the same old, same old Groundhog Day. Um, so that's my challenge to you this week. We know that we're not great at dealing with flow-based systems. That much is evident in the way that we're running our projects, we're running our organizations, and that continual focus back to goal setting and achievement and, and those sorts of things. And that on some level, even subconsciously, that unwillingness to get into the rhythm of slow, incremental, continuous improvement. We we continue to fight back and to want to go back to what's that silver bullet that's going to solve our organizational problems. 
and to go and to work through some of those other flow-based systems that you have going on in your life and see what you can learn from getting better at those that might apply to your business. So that's my challenge for you this week. Um, as I said, feeling out ideas today. I hope wherever you are in the world, you've got some value out of this conversation and you're having an awesome, awesome day. And uh, I will see you again next week. Thanks so much for your time and attention.